Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Orange County Department of Education Virtual College Fair. We are so happy to have you and so happy that you're participating tonight. We have a killer lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening, but before I turn it over for, to them, I do have a couple of housekeeping items for you. Number one, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphones are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you but they do know that you're gonna have some questions and they wanna make sure that those questions get answered. So at any time during the presentation tonight, um, use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your, of your screen to um, type your question. Do note in your question, the college or university that you're directing your question to so that they can answer most appropriately. Um, thirdly, this is a really fun way to learn about colleges and universities. Maybe it's a school that you've never heard of before or a school that you've um, really been interested in. You're going to hear a lot from, you're going to be able to hear from a lot of different institutions in this 45 minutes. Um, there's also more sessions. There's a whole nother hour tonight, and then there's also more hours tomorrow. So we hope that you'll sign up for additional sessions. This is being recorded tonight and will be available at strivescan.com slash COSI. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our first presenter. You're first going to have the opportunity to hear from SUNY Cortland. Alex, take it away whenever you're ready. Hello, so I'm Alex. I'm an admissions counselor at SUNY Cortland. I'm going to share my screen. Um, so I'll just tell you a little about SUNY Cortland. Um, so we're a medium-sized college, uh, around 63 undergraduate students. So every first year, about 1,250 students um, start their first semester and about 500 new transfer students begin as well. So the average class size um, is around 24 students, student to faculty ratio 15 to one. Um, so especially as you progress in your degree process, um, you'll know a lot of the same people in the classes, professors know their students' names. Um, so it's kind of right in the middle. So um, recently we've put, oh, sorry, more than $350 million um, into investing in our facilities. Uh, we did a few slides, we will, I'll show some of those. Uh, so this is Moffitt Center. Um, it holds our economics, criminology, sociology, political science, health and math mathematics department. It also holds one of our brand new coffee shops. Dowd Fine Arts um, holds our musical theater classes and then any of our art programs as well. This is our main theater. Bowers Hall holds our science classes. Um, all in this building, also our planetarium. Professional studies is where we have our kinesiology department, so that's sport management, exercise science, um, those programs, speech and hearing, science, and recreation. So Corey Union is our student union. Uh, we have three different dining halls located here, or dining options located here. Um, this is where our student government runs clubs. Some academic classes are held in here as well. So our student life center is definitely our most active building on campus. We have around 2,500 students um, come here every day. It's where all of our like uh, cardio machines are, free weights, workout equipment. There's an indoor track. Um, we have a 50 person hot tub, swimming pools, basketball court, volleyball, anything you could really think of to do is in this building. Um, we have our rock wall. Our outdoor pursuits club is located in here where they um, you can rent out like kayaks and fishing poles, stuff like that. And also holds our main dining hall bistro because um, we do have all you two all you can eat dining halls um, and one of them is, is located in this building. So um, we are located right in the center of New York State. Uh, we're about 45 minutes away from Binghamton and about 30 to 35 minutes away from uh, Syracuse and Ithaca. So right in the center of New York State, um, we were just ranked number one for campus safety. We have our university police department here on campus um, that work 24 hours a day. So we have 68 different majors. So they're all not even all listed on these, the screen, um, but it's written pretty small, so you probably can't see. Uh, if you go to courtland.edu slash majors, all of our different programs will be listed on there. Education's what we're known for, um, but we also have other like strong programs, sport management, exercise science, speech and hearing science, all really popular as well. 
Um, but you can definitely check out all of those on our website. So we have around 80 different clubs on campus, all different types, student government, dance clubs, music, uh, multicultural club. So there's always things going on. Um, so we require all students live on campus the first two years, um, and then typically move off campus their junior and senior year into a apartment or housing off campus, but students are guaranteed housing all four years if that's what they choose. Um, and all students can have cars on campus. So our athletics facilities, we're division three for athletics. We do um, also have athletics at the club and intramural level as well. And this is um, just kind of our, our sports field. Um, so we do have a office on campus called uh, Career Services, which is designed to help students find jobs on and off campus um, and internships. A lot of our students um, go on to work like a lot of our sport management students do internship and work at ESPN. We have our Disney um, program where students do an internship down in Disney, countless study abroad programs as well. Um, so first year criteria, we do require four years of English and social studies, three to four years of math, science, foreign language. Average GPA we see is around 86 to 92. Um, and we're not using any ACT or SAT test scores in our decision making process for this year. We do accept credits um, for AP, college level, IB, um, and the CLEP exam. So uh, these are scholarship opportunities. All students are automatically um, reviewed for at time of application. And um, all out-of-state students do receive our future New Yorker award, which is a $7,500 uh, scholarship towards um, tuition, room, and board. We also do have countless um, Merit or endowed scholarships that any student can apply for. Um, and since we are a SUNY school, it tends to be more affordable than private universities. Um, so, and most of our students do receive some kind of um, financial aid. So our, our early action um, deadline is November 15th, which um, it's non-binding. It just means that if you uh, apply by um, that deadline, you will receive a letter from us by January 1st. Uh, we start sending out decisions in December. So um, as early as you can get those in, the better. I think I'm running out of time. So I will take it on to the next one, but thank you so much for listening to me. Thanks, Alex, so much to yeah. you and SUNY Cortland. Next up, I'd like to introduce to you Pace University. Take it away, Megan, whenever you're ready. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Megan Mummy, and I am the Associate Director of Admissions on Pace's New York City campus. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Pace University, and I want to first highlight the Pace path. So the PACE Path is a customized education program that we developed for our students to make sure that they are taking advantage of everything that we have to offer with academics, uh, with con connections for internships, mentors and advisors, getting, sure, getting you involved inside the classroom and outside of the classroom. Your PACE Path will be unique to you and really make sure that you are getting a well-rounded college experience. The first thing I wanna to touch on within the PACE path is the academic side of things. So at PACE, we have six different academic schools. First, we have our College of Health Professions, which has a nursing major that is a direct admit program, as well as a health science major. We have our Dyson College of Arts and Sciences, which has programs from psychology to biology and also our School of Performing Arts. We do also have a law school available at the graduate level. So if law school is a goal for you, there is a three plus three program at PACE. Our Lupin School of Business is AACSB accredited and has all of the business programs, including accounting, management, marketing, finance, and the list goes on from there. School of Education has early childhood, childhood and adolescent education. And then our Seidenberg School has computer science, information systems, and information technology. With the exception of our nursing program and our School of Performing Arts, just because there are a few extra requirements for those programs, all of our other majors have the same admission requirements. That means that if you are applying to PACE as an undecided student, or you're applying with a major but you're not totally sure that that's the major you actually want to pursue, 
If you're admitted, you're admitted to the programs and you have that flexibility to change your major either before you start at the university or once you're at the university, you can work with your advisor to change your major. You can also double major or minor, even if it's across different academic schools. Again, you're not locked into one academic school while you're at the university. We do have about 8,000 students between our two campuses, but we do, as a part of the PACE path, keep the class sizes small. So our average class size is about 20 students and our student to faculty ratio is 14 to one. So at PACE, you will not be in these huge stadium style lecture halls. We keep the classes small so you can make those connections. Internships are another way that we are able to really connect our students with everything that New York has to offer. Our career services office is one of the largest in the city and students are able to connect with career services their first day on campus. They will help you every step of the way with interview prep, resume prep, um, and then finding those internships, whether it's at one of our on-campus internship fairs or utilizing our online database called Handshake, where you're not only able to apply for internships yourself, but companies can actually review your resume and reach out to you if you would be a good fit. We intern with a lot of big name companies because of our location in New York. So a lot of our finance students are interning on Wall Street. Our accounting students are interning at the big four accounting firms. Our English students are interning with the big five publishing houses and the list goes on from there. So no matter what your major is, whether it's one of the largest or one of the smallest, we will definitely be able to help you with those experiences your whole way through at Pace. Moving on to the campus locations. So we do actually have two campuses. One is in the city and the other is right outside of the city. So I do wanna to touch on just our New York City campus a little bit first. So our New York City campus is in Manhattan, right downtown, right by the Brooklyn Bridge and City Hall. So we are right in the city. It is our larger of the two campuses in regards to student size. So we have a little over 5,000 undergraduate students on the New York City campus. We do have four different residence halls on our New York City campus and housing is guaranteed for all four years, but not required. So up to you if you would like to take advantage of that, of that or not. And then last point about the New York City campus is that everything is located within a five block radius from our main building. So the campus is totally walkable and you will not have to worry about taking uh, the subway to commute back and forth from your classes to your residence hall or anything else um, within the campus at Pace. On the flip side, we do have a traditional campus located in Westchester, New York, which is 45 minutes outside of the city. So this campus is definitely very suburban and it's actually a 200 acre campus with a little under 3000 undergraduate students. We have nature trails, we have an environmental center, there's a pond, uh, and there are five residence halls up in Westchester. And just like the New York City campus, the housing is guaranteed for all four years on this campus. We do also have Division II Athletics located on the Westchester campus. So if you are looking to play a varsity sport in college, you will need to choose Westchester as your main base. With the application, there are a few things that we'll need to review your application. So first of all, we'll need your application itself. We are a member of the common application and there is also a PACE application. We'll need your, uh, your high school transcript, two letters of recommendation, your essay, and then if you would like to submit SATs or ACTs, you are able to, but we are a test optional university. Here are some of our different deadlines. So the first one is not actually a deadline, but we like to tell students to apply early for the FAFSA. It's open and students that submit their FAFSA by December 1st will receive an additional $1,000 merit scholarship on top of their um, original merit scholarship that they're offered. There are other deadlines and I know I'm running out of time, uh, but here is the average amount of aid offered to all of our new undergraduate students each year. And here is my contact information. So if you have any additional questions after today, you can reach out to me. Thank you. Amanda, thanks so much to you and Pace University. I hope you guys are having a lot of fun. I know you've heard from two great institutions and we still have some to go. So next up, I'd like to introduce to you um, Bard College at Simons Rock. Take it away whenever you're ready. 
Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Michelle Chavez, and I am the Director of Admissions for Bard College at Simons Rock. And I have a great, unique proposition for you. Uh, we are actually an early college, so students do not have to wait until uh, they complete high school to actually begin their bachelor's degree at Simons Rock. Um, so we were founded back in 1966 by our founder here, Elizabeth Blodgett, who understood that students were ready for college level coursework at an earlier age and didn't have to wait um, until they were 18 to begin this coursework. So at si uh, Bard College at Simons Rock, age doesn't define your intellect. And our mission is to ensure that we uh, have a space for motivated young scholars to empower and challenge themselves um, at our institution. We are in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, uh, named one of the best towns in America by Smithsonian Magazine. We are two and a half hours away from New York City and two and a half hours away from Boston. So if you ever want those weekend getaways, you can definitely hop on one of the local transportation systems to head over to those fantastic cities. Um, we also are a very nice small campus. So about 400 students are in our campus. Our class size is about 11 per faculty, but our faculty student ratio is actually six to one. All classes are taught by professors with PhDs in their field. And US News and World Report ranked us number four for uh, most innovation in our region and number five for best undergraduate teaching. Um, so you'll definitely benefit from really fantastic personalized education at Bard College at Simons Rock. So like many um, colleges, we begin our first couple of years with writing and thinking the liberal arts curriculum, ensuring that you're a well-rounded individual and that you can speak to different topics and explore different areas of study. At Bard College at Simons Rock, we have about 35 majors ranging from biology, chemistry, pre-med, uh, psychology, arts, uh, musical theater. Uh, and if we do not have a major that you would like, you can actually create one with one of our faculty members. Um, and then students during their third year after declaring their major can have the opportunity to study away in one of our other partner campuses across the country or internationally, which is an exciting opportunity if you're looking to explore and become part of a bigger institution that way. And during your senior year, you actually get to work with one of our professors and work on a thesis, which really prepares you for college uh, graduate level coursework. And so you can definitely participate in one of the graduate programs at these institutions presented here today. We also are really well known for some of our dual degree partnerships. Uh, we have a pre-engineering with both Columbia and Dartmouth University. So students will take three years at Bard College at Simons Rock and then have preferred admission to either Columbia or um, Dartmouth with uh, different tracks in engineering programs for Columbia and a general uh, engineering degree at Dartmouth. One of our really cool programs is the Upstate Medical Program. So students will study their pre-med at Bard College at Simons Rock for four years. And then once they complete their requirements, will apply to the Upstate Medical Program, no MCAT required. Um, and we have five seats available every year for this program. We also have a really cool Vermont Law Partnership. So students can participate in this program by studying at Bar College at Simons Rock for three years and then attending the Vermont Law School for a year to receive both their bachelor's and master's in four years. Can you imagine having both degrees by the age of 20? Insane. Um, so these are some fantastic opportunities. And here are some of our great alumni um, who you might recognize from movies, journalism, entrepreneurship. We really have a really well-rounded group of individuals. And this is done through the work of our de career development office who really works with you to personalize your internship experience and explore different opportunities that you may have around the country or even internationally. Um, this is something that we really like to to, uh, mention to students as they begin to explore about what is it that they would really like to study and careers that they would like to pursue that really personalize attention.
we're also a residential campus. So we have uh, college level housing for students. Um, it's not required to live on campus, uh, but we do offer housing for all four years. We have a variety of student organizations. And if it doesn't exist, you're more than welcome to create it. Um, so feel free to do so. We, are, we do have athletics, but we're a non-competitive school. So students can walk up into our basketball team, soccer team, swim team. Um, we compete with other schools, but we are a walk-on institution. And then we host a plethora of campus events. So if you're looking to have fun uh, and engage in a community that's small, you can definitely find that at Bar College at Simons Rock. We also have a wellness and safety program, like SUNY Cortland mentioned, we have uh, campus safety 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We also have a fantastic counseling center who provides students unlimited access to counseling services, which is really fantastic. And so you will never be um, uh, referred to an outside um, counselor for assistance. And here is our application. We are also part of the Common App. We do not have an application fee, so students are more than welcome to apply for free. And here is my contact in case you have any questions and want to reach out in the future. Thank you so much for your time. Michelle, thank you so much to you and Bards College at Simons Rock. Um, our final presentation, well, our next presentation, I'm sorry, tonight will be from St. John's University. Take it away, Anthony, whenever you're ready. Okay, share my screen, one moment. All right, there we go. All right, good afternoon. Wait, yes, West Coast time. <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. My name is Anthony, and I'm here from St. John's University. Hopefully you guys are doing all well today. So this first picture here, I'd like to just mention really quickly, we are in New York City, but we do have a 110 degree campus within New York City. So this is where you see this little uh, introductory picture right here before I pass it. So to give a little short introduction to us, we are a Catholic Vincentian metropolitan and global institution. We do have a couple of different campuses within the city of New York, which you see in red. So we're located in Queens, Staten Island, and Manhattan. So for those of you who aren't uh, too familiar with the New York City geography, we have our subway map here. So we have Queens right there, which is where the red is. That's where our location is for Queens. The little smaller one here in the island of Manhattan, and then also in Staten Island. Queens is our biggest location. And if you're interested in sports, that's where all of our sports are housed as well. We also have a campus in Rome, Paris, and Limerick Island. So there's a lot of opportunities to study abroad. We have a study abroad program where you can actually go to Rome, Paris, and Ireland all in one semester. So that's very uh, unique as well. Some of our key numbers. We have just over 17,000 students. We do have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. So we do have measurable classroom sizes, about 25 uh, students per class. We have 47 different states represented as well as 123 different countries. So a lot of students in these classrooms are coming from many different places. Um, as I mentioned before, we are a division one sports school. So we have 17 division one Big East athletic programs. Uh, we are basketball as well. So those of you who are looking for football, fortunately we don't have football. But uh, we do play basketball in Madison Square Garden, so hopefully that makes up a little bit for it. In terms of organizations, we have just over 180 students on campus. And for those of you who are looking for Greek life, we do have Greek life on campus as well. This slide is just a breakdown of our colleges. So we have a College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, where we have a six-year Doctor of Pharmacy direct entry program, biomedical sciences, um, physician assistant, a couple of other programs as well. We have Collins College of Professional Studies, where we have majors such as communications, journalism, computer science, cybersecurity, um, criminal justice, and some other majors as well. Then we have our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, our School of Education, and lastly, our Peter J. Tobin College of Business. Our university-wide um, core curriculum expands to um, every single major. Some majors do require languages. We do require two philosophy and two theology courses, being that we are a Catholic institution. Our honors program, you are automatically reviewed for it when you go through the application process, so there's no separate application for that. And then lastly, multiple dual degree options. We do have options in um, MBAs, so five-year MBAs. We have a three plus three JD law degree and um, BA program as well, um, and also a five-year master's degree in uh, education. So if you have questions about that, feel free to reach out. Living on campus, we don't require you to live on campus, but it is a guarantee for all four years if you would like to. We also own off-campus buildings as well. 
they're mostly suite style. Every building suite style except for one building. So basically most of your rooms would be um, within the suite. You walk through the suite door, you have two rooms each side, two back rooms each end, and the rooms vary from singles, double, and triples. Some of our numbers here, not, last year we had 89% of students graduated, I mean, it's gonna be higher after graduation. And typically we're around 94, but last year we took a little bit with the pandemic. But overall, you can see the different employers and internship partners that we have. So a lot of different areas where students have interned at, ranging from media to sports, to criminal justice, to education, to healthcare, and a lot of different areas. Our application process, we are free to apply on the Common App as well as the, our own internal application. So it's a completely up to you, doesn't matter which one that you use. Our early decision deadline is November 15th. Early action is December 1st. After December 1st, we are a rolling admissions institution. In terms of what to submit, you will need a transcript. We are test optional, but if you would like to submit your test scores, we will accept them. The average SAT is a 1200, average ACT is a 25, and we do super score. So if you've taken the test multiple times, definitely feel free to send it over to us. Um, bottom here says optional materials, 250 word personal essay. If you are applying test optional, you do have to write an essay. If you're submitting test scores, then the essay is technically uh, optional. But I do recommend submitting essays anyway. For merit scholarships, this current year we're offering 11,000 to 33,000, somewhere in that range. So depending on where you fall on the GPA or test score scale, um, we have a Catholic school scholarship, service award scholarship, and alumni scholarship. Those are all part of the um, application process. So you will they'll ask you questions, simply answer them, and then you'll know if you're qualified for those or not. And then the ones that are right are ones that we have for separate applications for the deadline and January. Tuition for upcoming years, 46,000. The rule board is another 18,000. And then lastly, finishing up here, if you ever do want to visit here, find yourself in New York in the next month or so, we do have a open house coming up, but we have visits all year round. So definitely feel free to visit St. John's if you find yourself in New York City and you feel free to reach out to me as well. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your visits here and I'll pass it on. Thank you so much, Anthony and St. John's University. Our final presentation tonight will be from Binghamton University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Yes, let me just share my screen quickly with you all. So unfortunately, the only thing, my I'm actually in California right now and my Wi-Fi is treacherous right now in this hotel. So this is um, the out-of-state brochure. So there'll be a quick um, page on pricing, but no, depending on where you are, that it might change a little bit. Um, so we are Binghamton University. We are the number one public university in all of New York. So in all those SUNY schools, we sit right there at the top. That's our beautiful campus kind of right there on the page. Binghamton by the numbers, we're about 14,000 undergraduate students, about 3,000 with our graduate students. You're looking at a total campus population of about 17,000, so a little bit on the larger size, the midsize. Um, our academic profile, you can see, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse, but down here on the bottom, those are our mid 50% numbers. So I do want to stress that those are not cutoffs. Those are simply the mid 50%. So we do accept both below and above those numbers, depending on the student you are. Also for any of our seniors out there, we are test optional. So those scores for your ACT and SAT are completely test optional. When we look at your application at Binghamton, we're gonna look at everything. So if you submit it, we'll look at one of those things. If you don't submit it, we'll just look at everything else you send in. The other number I wanna pull you to is right over on the left side of the screen, you see our retention rate. So it's a really, really important number, a number I encourage you to look at all the schools you're considering. Um, Binghamton's retention rate's 92%, which means that all the students that come our first year, 92%, 2% of those are going to stay for our next year. So that tells you kind of everything that I'm telling you today, everything that you kind of hear about Binghamton is actually true. And the students are actually happy, which is a good thing. <laughs> um, I won't go through everything on this page. And um, one thing I definitely would hint out is um, even though we are a little bit on the bigger side, about 14,000 for that undergrad, you still have a very small um, faculty to student ratio. So only about 19 to one. So you're still not going to feel like you're, you know, a fish in the sea lost without anywhere to turn. We only have one of those larger size lecture halls. So you're still going to have that close, intimate um, academic experience here at Binghamton. How it works is we have six separate schools, all with kind of in that Binghamton University title. So they're all on Binghamton's campus. They're not kind of spread out through the world like some of the other schools. They're all in Binghamton. Um, and you apply directly to the school that you want to do. So if you wanted to apply to the school of management, if you wanted to do business, if you wanted to do engineering, if you wanted to do human work, social development, or nursing, all of those are some of our smaller, more professional schools. And you would apply directly into the schools itself. Anything else you could think of? So 
theater, or cinema, art history, pre-law, pre-med, biology, any of those STEM fields, everything else is going to find itself in the Harper College of Arts and Sciences. It's our largest school on campus. About 60% of our students go there. Um, so one thing that's cool, though, about the professional programs, if you want to do something like business, is you'd be able to get into that program. It is direct admit, so you apply directly to it right off the bat, so right as a freshman. So you're not going to have to wait until your sophomore, junior, or senior year to get into those classes. You'll be able to experience it um, the moment you step on campus, which I think is a really cool opportunity. Um, we also have those accelerated fast track degrees at Binghamton, so being able to um, get save money, save time, get two degrees is definitely awesome. It's something I actually did. I'm an alumni of Binghamton. That's the exact thing I did to get my master's in business. Um, and we also have some pre-professional programs at Binghamton. All those are going to be advising based. That's going to be your biggest resource. Um, but we'll make sure that if you wanted to go off to medical school, if you want to go to law school, any of those second kind of tier educations after your undergraduate degree, that you would be completely prepared for that. Um, so this is cost a little. If you are an out-of-state student, it's right around 45000 In-state for our New Yorkers, it's about $27,000 um, total cost of attendance, so not just tuition. So you do have that beautiful state university um, public price. Um, our, for all of our out-of-state residents, we do offer merit-based scholarships to try and get that number closer to our in-state tuition. Um, you don't have to do any extra applications. There's no boxes you have to check. As long as you apply to Binghamton, you will be considered for those scholarships. We also have the Binghamton Impacts. So there's lots of ways. We are an R1 university, so that means every professor is doing research. We have lots of internships and opportunities. You can do service learning in the area or even abroad. And actually through that SUNY program, we have over a thousand different um, resources through any of those SUNY schools. So SUNY Cortland, I know, is one of the other ones. Um, any SUNY school, you can go through any of their um, study abroad programs. So Binghamton, any SUNY school you could possibly go to, it's a really great opportunity to kind of get out there and study abroad. Um, we also have some honors programs here at Binghamton. If you do want to learn any more about these, they are all invitation only. Um, so if you are really looking to be part of one, um, feel free. You can find my name email online, and we can definitely talk more about that if it's the right path for you. Um, but if not, it's a very small percentage of our students, so absolutely no worries. Um, as you can see, we have alumni all over the world. Um, one of my favorites to point out is um, Stephen Canals, who was the co-creator of Pose. They have like 21 Grammy nominations at this point. Um, so Binghamton, also known for Flo from Progressive. I'm sure some of you know who she is. Um, so lots of opportunities to kind of maybe know some faces. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't. Um, but these are some of the people who have gone to Binghamton in the time. Um, we have this beautiful nature preserve on campus. There's one more picture right here. Um, it's 190 acres. It's beautiful. Um, student life, we have actually 450 plus student run clubs and organizations. So there's anything that you'd want to get involved in here at Binghamton. We have 21 division one teams, just like St. John's. We also don't have a football team, um, but we did get into March Madness one time. We did go against Duke in the first round and lose very it was not great, but we got there. And that's the, that's the important part. Um, we also have 38 club sports teams. Um, so you have anything from religious and cultural organizations. We have cheese club at Binghamton. So really anything you can imagine, um, that's kind of how the clubs work. And then housing and dining. So this is kind of an example of one of our, of our residential communities. Um, this is Mountain View. It has about six buildings. Um, there's a nice little dining hall in the middle. Um, I know I'm running out of time, so I'll jump right to the end. This is where we are in Binghamton University. So we're right on the border of Pennsylvania and New York, about three hours from New York City. And you can find all of our majors here. I know that might look a little overwhelming. This is usually on the back of a book. So if you want to see um, this in a little bit better of light, um, feel free to go on our website and you can definitely learn a lot more. And I'll pass it back over. I'm sorry if I went over a minute or two. <laughs> You're fine. Thank you so much. I now would like to invite all of our panelists to turn back on their cameras for a couple of quick questions. So um, in the same order that you presented, uh, what is one thing that you would like students and families to remember about your institution? And we'll start with um, Alex from SUNY Cortland first. Okay, hi. Um, so usually like the p things people remember about our institution are like how we're known for education and those types of programs, our athletics, but really like what makes Cortland so like special is just the, the positive energy we have on campus, all of our, we call it the Red Dragon Pride. Uh, our, like I said, athletics are strong, academics and um, all our student clubs, our students are so like connected, connected with the community. Um, so it's just like a really happy, positive family feel. So if you ever get a chance to come out to central New York, you can definitely feel that for yourself by um, coming on our campus. 
So at Pace, uh, we have the dual campus location, which I think is really important to highlight, especially for students coming from out of state, because we are one university. So if you are coming to New York from California and you think you want the city, that's great. You can be in the city. Uh, if you think you want Westchester, that's great. Uh, but if you choose one and then you realize maybe that's not the right fit for you, you have the ability to work with your advisor and housing and move from one campus to the other. So you don't have to transfer, you don't have to worry about losing credits or anything like that. And you have that flexibility to stay on track even though you would be moving locations. And then, you know, with the university, regardless of the campus, we have really, really strong internship connections that will be available to you throughout your four years. Hi, everyone. Uh, I would say for us is the fact that you can start college sooner. And so if you're ready for the challenge and you are a scholar looking to begin college and you don't necessarily need to be 18, you can be 16 or 17, then Bard College is a great opportunity for you to begin your bachelor's degree sooner. I would say, and excuse my green screen thing going on, uh, I'm in a hotel in California also. I don't know what's happening right now. It's, it's getting dark. I think it's I think weird, so sorry about that. <laughs> it was so weird. But anyway, um, one thing to remember about St. John's for us is similar to face also like the location. So our biggest campus is in Queens. So we call it this, it's like weird. <laughs> this is our suburban urban campus. So it is a 110 acre campus. And but although you're still in New York City. So if you are a little apprehensive, because I do understand like, you know, coming all the way from California, there's a lot of foot traffic in New York. If you drive in New York or you drive in California, I tell you, as somebody who does both, very different things. It's very different driving New York versus California. So I'd be a little bit overwhelmed with that. We do have a you know traditional campus in the middle of New York City, and you do get the best of both worlds. As well. And we also have a Manhattan campus. So if you really do want to kind of dive into that, you can also go there. But it gives you kind of a good balance, as well as a global institution. So you can study in Paris, Rome, and Ireland as well. Yeah, and what I would say is, so I think what you're gonna find with any schools that you're looking at, I mean, education is gonna be there. A lot of things you're looking for, kind of those staples you're gonna find anywhere. Um, the one thing I always like to talk about with Binghamton, um, my personal experience is being an alumni there, is definitely the community itself. So everyone's kind of speaking to the location. I think they all have their own um, perks to them. One really cool thing about Binghamton is you're so close, um, New York. We're right on the border of Pennsylvania. So you have a lot of big metropolitan areas. You can go up to Cortland. Um, you could say, say hi to Alex. <laughs> you could go to Syracuse. It's about three hours from the city. So it's really good at kind of integrating you in that larger community but also the Binghamton community. So for example, like I have a garden plot where like I grew a whole cabbage this year right downtown. Um, we have like Binghamton's known for like all their festivals where the carousel capital of the world. Um, so I think it's really important, especially for out of state that when you go over to anywhere, if you're, if you're you know, not gonna stay somewhere that's local to you, having that environment and that community base where you can be involved in more than a great education, um, I think it's really important. I think that's something that you could definitely find at Binghamton. All great points. Um, now I'd like to tap into your expertise a little. And um, the college search process, you know, we as admissions professionals do this every year, right? And so it's very comfortable for us, but um, students and families are doing this um, for the first time. So what is your best piece of advice for them, either the student or the family um, going through the process? And we will go in the same order that you presented again. So Alex at first. Okay, um, so I know a lot of students like are um, still like undecided what major um, to declare as a student and stuff. And um, I know for SUNY Cortland are like how we do things is we don't declare students or we don't require students to declare a major till junior year. Um, obviously it's different at other schools, but I know a lot of students are super um, like scared. And so it is okay like if you go in undecided um, or like as a pre-major undeclared and kind of figure out your path. So do a lot of students do end up changing their major at least once. I know I, when I was in college, I changed my major. I ended up adding a minor my senior year. So there's so many different options. Uh, and I, I know some people get kind of down about the fact that they don't know. So um, it's always an option to not know because um, there's so many resources at school that will help you figure that out. So just one last like thing that it's to worry. Yeah. So my piece of advice would be to ask questions. So we are in this and we do this every day, but I remember I was a first generation student and I had no idea what FAFSA meant. 
um, for a long time and I waited and I shouldn't have waited. So Google is your friend um, and your admissions counselors are your friends. So definitely ask us and it's better to ask us now um, versus August. Um, and it, I'm not saying August is necessarily too late for any of your questions, you know, come to us with questions, whatever, but definitely feel free to use us as resources because we know um, and we can help you with those answers. I always like to advise students not to let the cost of attendance be the reason why you do not apply to an institution. Um, remember that it you know, schools are like a car dealership, right? You walk into a car dealership and you will not be paying the price that's on that sticker. So colleges are the same when you submit your FAFSA, like Megan mentioned, and we offer you different scholarships. Your cost of attendance might be significantly different from what you see on the website. And remember, you're always in control. So you will submit your application, we'll make the decision, we'll offer you a package. But at the end of the day, you're the one, you and your family decide what's the best decision, both financially and academic for you. So it, you know, don't be the, do not let cost of attendance be the reason why you don't uh, try to see if you're able to go to one of these schools. My piece of advice would be to utilize your time wisely. So I always tell students, you know, Applying earlier, the better is more beneficial for you and the school as well sometimes, but it's mostly more beneficial for you because it gives you more time to identify what you want in the school. So where you want to go. Also, the financial aid and scholarships that are available, you know, getting yourself time to get those opportunities to kind of piggyback what she was saying, you know, basically that aids in being able to afford these colleges that you think you can't afford. So time is your friend, you know, it, it could be against you if you wait too long. So you want to make it your friend. So you know, the earlier you apply, when the spring comes around, all you have to do at that point is really worry about what is the right fit. Can I visit these schools? Speak to the students. Speak to the uh, administrators. Speak to the professors. And really, you will know when you know. Like I feel like we all we pick the college. You either know sometimes when you're on campus, and or the reverse. Like you go to the campus, and you're like, I know this isn't it. So you want you know you want to make sure you go through those motions. So if you wait longer while you're applying and visiting and doing everything at the same time in the spring, and that can be very stressful. So I would say focus right now in the fall on, you know, getting applications in, meeting your deadlines, then as you get your sentences, use the spring to your advantage and do the deep research and visiting that you need to do. Yeah, and then I think, I mean, those are all great points. I back them all up, especially the question asking, um, any of those things. I know first, my first piece of advice is definitely, I always tell students to take a breath. It's okay. Um, it, it, I mean, I know college is a big thing, but it is just college. You'll have time. You'll have time to make those decisions. I know, especially senior year, it feels like it just hits you so fast. So I encourage you just to slow down a second, remind you that it's going to be okay. Um, I'm going to speak to a little bit maybe about the application, just so it's a little bit different kind of advice. Um, so my application or any application, especially on those common apps, I know you have to write that one essay. And what I hear the most when I go to all the different schools, I talk to all of you different students, um, people get really, really stressed out about that essay. They're like, what should I write? How should I write it? My biggest advice, and we can kind of see if other people may not just might not agree with me, um, but is don't try and write an essay that you think that we want to read. Um, write an essay, it could be about anything. Like my college essay going to when I, about five years ago and I was just in your seats, um, I wrote about it a conversation I had with my mother. So it's like, it really can be about anything as long as it's something that we don't know about you. If we didn't read that essay, like we'll know you're a great student, right? We're going to see everything that you send us, but just write about something that we wouldn't know if we didn't know, you know, Kyle or Isabella, I see your names on the this side. I hope that's okay that I called you out. Um, and, and, and it will be okay. So that's, that's my little piece of advice. <laughs> And I think all of our professionals on the screen would agree to have a little bit of fun with this process. It is a really exciting time of your life and college is a transformative experience. And so try to enjoy um, the search process. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. As you close out, there'll be a quick five question survey. So we hope that you will provide us with some um, some feedback and sign up for more sessions. There is one more hour tonight and there is more um, coming tomorrow. And this was recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash COSI. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, and have a great evening. Bye-bye.